I didn't think that I, I did anything extraordinary. His is a story of survival now forever linked to a Bronx middle school thanks to this violin purchased at a refugee camp in Germany and the buyer, 95-year-old Joe Feingold, the featured speaker at the annual Bronx Women's Bar Association Holocaust Remembrance at Bronx Hall of Justice with the ceremony that included performances by the Bronx Global Learning Institute for Girls Orchestra, an orchestra that includes Joe's violin. And we think it's really important to educate, especially the kids, and to keep the dialogue going among the people in the community, so we do it every year. Before immigrating to the United States from that camp, he spent six years in Siberian labor camps. In the bung- bungalow that they sent us, there were four young men like me and three old people, very old, from Czechoslovakia. They didn't make it. He is also the last living survivor of the 1946 Kielce pogrom in Poland, where Holocaust survivors, one year after returning to their homes following World War II, were forced to leave their beloved city. All events featured in the Academy Award-nominated film Joe's Violin, now available in book form. Since there are so few Holocaust survivors still alive, it's a very special thing to come and listen to those who are still here and talking about their experiences. We have judges and basically just to keep alive or keep people aware of what has happened in history. Both the book and film are based on his memoir he completed in 1985 at the urging of family members, something that is helping them to further shed light on his life, shared niece Jilla Lewis. I think growing up I never really knew much about Uncle Joe's experiences because people didn't talk a lot about the Holocaust then. But when the film came out and I started hearing this whole background of how he spent six years in Siberia and how his family was torn apart, these are universal themes. Born on March 23, 1923 in Warsaw and living in Kielce, Poland with his parents from 1933 to 39 as the oldest of three siblings, life would transform dramatically as his family is split apart. His mother and youngest brother die at a concentration camp while he and his father are sent to Siberia. After reuniting with his remaining family in Germany, Feingold sought asylum in the United States, a country he is continually grateful to, likening his journey to those living in the present day seeking a better life. After graduating from Cooper Union and Columbia University School of Architecture, he started his own firm where he worked until 2010. Today, he's become vocal on immigration rights and often asked this question, says Lewis. If I were a refugee now, coming to America now, how would they treat me? Because when he came in 48, he was welcomed. There were, you know, agencies that provided food and shelter, and he was able to go to night school, learn English, get into Cooper Union and Columbia Architecture School and make a life. A way to signal his support has been through the sharing of his violin, now dubbed Joe's Violin, with the Bronx Global Learning Institute for Girls, where it's assigned to a top performing student each year, a tradition that began with Brianna Perez featured in the film. Sacha Roman is the third recipient. There's a very beautiful story to it. and. I just feel that it's very special. It's just an honor, you know, we've really built a friendship over the past few years, you know, being in Joe's violin together and he's just really just a role model for all of our students. Through Joe's violin and his book, he's been able to bridge a very tragic event to the present day and in so doing educate a new generation. For Roxnet, this is Arlene Makoko.